Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Johnson. This is Studio Talk. Today, I'm going to share with you my experience with Frap Audio's 2806 Compressor Expander. I've been using this unit in my studio now for well over three months on a daily basis. Now, I've got a lot of different compressors here in my studio that really cover the gamut. I have to be honest with you, though, this unit is a nice complement to the existing compressors I have here. The sound of this thing is actually very, very, very good. Is it like everything else? No, really it isn't, um, but it's similar in so many ways. It's a VCA-style compressor that can get you into 1176 territory uh, with the various controls and dials that you have uh, within this unit. Now, speaking of those various controls and dials, if you've ever used a distressor, you know that there's a lot of options. Sometimes overwhelming at first when you first get into it, uh, but once you figure it out, it's quite easy. The same is the case for this. There's a lot to this unit that this is a unit that you're really going to need to crack open the manual uh, to really get a feel for it. It's one of the few compressors I've ever used where I ever felt the need to even consider a manual, but this one is actually mandatory because it's got a lot of potential and power to it. Most of you are probably asking the question, why does this have an expander in it? And I certainly understand that. But before we do that, let's talk about what an expander actually does. An expander is actually the opposite of a compressor. It's really more of a noise gate more than anything else. But the difference between it and a traditional noise gate, it takes a gentle approach. Most of you are going to use noise gates on your drums and things like that in a live situation or even, even in post, although you can edit that out. But you may choose to use noise gates within your workflow. An expander takes a gentler approach to it. Basically, is great for reducing noise. Uh, and it takes a soft, gentle approach to really kind of getting rid of that signal and really getting rid of that noise. The most common application, I think, probably for an expander today in hardware is for live use. And in a situation like that, if you happen to be a podcaster or something like that to where you do live streaming of some sort, this is an invaluable tool to be able to have a compressor and an expander built into one unit. You'll see the expander demonstrated later on in the audio examples, but it's really an invaluable tool for that. Whether or not you need it for doing most home recording studios, recording audio is questionable to me. I, quite frankly, would never do that because I can simply easily do that in post. All right, now that we got that out of the way, here's basically my overall feelings of this compressor. Like I said earlier, this compressor sets very nicely in my studio. I actually enjoy it quite a bit, and there's times where I reach for it first for different applications. It is a very universal compressor. For certain things, it necessarily would not be my go-to, but for others, absolutely. I've truly enjoyed using this unit, and you're going to get a chance to hear it quite extensively, honestly, in the audio examples. So let's talk about what's going to happen in the audio examples now. First up is going to be it on bass, where I really dial in various controls and settings and show most of the features, especially some of the, the knobs and the buttons and the switches that I talked about uh, just a minute ago, but then also um, really kind of, really kind of pushing the unit. Now, after that, there's going to be an acoustic guitar where you get a chance to hear it there. And then we're going to finish up with a vocal. Uh, and in that vocal, uh, towards the end of that vocal is where you're going to get a chance to see the expander. In other words, when that vocal ends, okay, and there's a little bit of quietening sound, you're going to hear that expander kick in and take a very gentle approach to take away that noise. Now, you may think it's subtle, but that subtlety is super important, especially if you're in a live situation. So do me a favor, check out the examples. Uh, and leave some comments down below. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the examples here. I truly have enjoyed using this compressor, and it has been a pleasure to have it in my studio for the last three months or greater. So take off in the audio examples, and until next time, I hope all of you have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>
I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. I've been lost thinking of you since you left me alone in the blues. off bypass switch when it's set to on the device is active when it's in bypass the input is directly routed to the output which means a hard bypass then when it's selected to off the device is off but the sound is still processed through its circuit external side chain switch when it's up it sends the external side chain to the compressor section before the contour stage when it's in mid aka sum same as above but sum to the internal side chain 
down sends it to the expander before the low pass and the high pass filter. Listen button in the up position is a compressor source. Mid, the listen function is inactive. Down listens to the expander source. Reference switch in the pre position, the compressor source is taken before the makeup gain. In the off position, the compressor is off, only the expander will work. Post, the compressor source is taken after the makeup gain. Threshold and ratio do as you would expect. Same as attack and release. The contour knob attenuates the low end of the signal feeding the envelope follower. When fully counterclockwise, the reference signal is unfiltered. The classic mode changes the compressor's time constraints to a slower configuration. It can add some noticeable artifacts, aka pumping sound, but with less harmonic distortion.